A very good morning. You're joining ITN News. I'm Vibodha Vijay Bandara. First, let's have a look at today's headlines. Partly Champika Ranavaka's driver denies his involvement in the controversial accident. The President and the Prime Minister grace Ranbi Madid's presentation. Minister Dinesh Gunawardana will address the 43rd session of the UN Human Rights Council tomorrow. Akila Viraj Karyavasam affirms that there is no crisis in the UNP. And from news overseas, world must prepare for pandemic, says the World Health Organization. And now for news in detail. The Land Reform Commission issued a total of 2,500 title deeds under the National Programme to Award Ranbima Deeds under the aegis of President Gotabe Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. The first phase of the Ranbima National Debate Award Ceremony was held at Temple Trees today. 200,000 Ranbima title deeds and deeds for seven Buddhist temples were presented. The Prime Minister said that a systematic program should be put in place to investigate delayed cases in court regarding compensation for land acquisition. State Minister S.B. Disanayaka stated that 100,000 acres of land had been illegally given to plantation companies during the previous regime. Minister S.M. Chandrasena said that after the new government came to power, it was possible to grant 200,000 land deeds to the people. Chairman of the Land Reform Commission, Attorney Nilanta Vijay Singh, also expressed his views. Deputy Solicitor General Dilip Apiris told court that former Minister Patali Champikaranavakar's driver, Dilum Tusita Kumar, has stated that he was not the driver of the jeep when the controversial accident took place in Rajagiriya. Deputy Solicitor General Dilip Apiris informed the Colombo Additional Magistrate today that the security personnel of former minister Patali Champika Ranavaka had also given false statements regarding the accident in Rajagiriya. The deputy solicitor general said that the investigation into the incident is almost over. He further stated that the second suspect has reissued a statement, changing the statement given on the day of the accident. Meanwhile, President's Council, appearing on behalf of the first suspect, Patali Champika Ranavaka, sought permission for his client to go abroad. Deputy Solicitor General Dilip Apiris objected to this and asked to produce the documents. The 43rd session of the UN Human Rights Council is being preceded in Geneva with Sri Lanka on the agenda. The human rights situation in Sri Lanka will be formally raised at the session on Thursday, while Foreign Relations Minister Dinesh Gunawardana will address the Council tomorrow. UN Secretary General at Antonio Guterres, United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, and Tijani Mohamed Bande, President of the General Assembly, made opening statements yesterday. In his speech, Guterres said that he was at the Human Rights Council, the fulcrum for international dialogue and cooperation to advance all human rights, to launch a call for action. He said that he wants to begin where human rights begin, with core understanding. Guterres said that human rights are about the dignity and worth of the human person. The 43rd session is taking place till the 20th March. The Foreign Relations Ministry, in coordination with the Sri Lanka Embassy in Rome and the Consulate General Office in Milan, has taken action to closely monitor and coordinate efforts to ensure the safety of Sri Lankan citizens residing in Italy following the recent rise of COVID-19 cases particularly in the Lombardy region. According to Sri Lanka Embassy in Rome and the Sri Lanka Consulate General Office in Milan, presently no Sri Lankans have fallen victim to the virus. 104,000 Sri Lankans reside in Italy, of which approximately 60% are in the Lombardy region. The missions are presently communicated with the health authorities in these regions and are in contact with Sri Lankan temples, community leaders and all others concerned. UNP General Secretary Akila Viraj Karyavasam says that there is no crisis in the UNP. Speaking at a press conference held at the party headquarters, Sirikota, Akila Viraj Karyavasam noted that the symbol of the alliance will be resolved and it will be either elephant or swan, as the heart has not been registered yet. 
Parliamentarian said that even though before the last presidential election, some quarters highlighted about the internal conflicts of the UNP, the party contested the election as a common front. Parliamentarian Uday Gammampil noted that the Samagi Balavege, the envisaged alliance of the UNP, does not entertain peace though the name boasts. A media briefing was held at the head office of the GMOA to educate about the set of proposals of the Government Medical Officers Association to control tobacco, alcohol and drugs. Secretary of the Government Medical Officers Association Dr. Harita Aludge and Assistant Secretary of the Association Dr. Navin Disoisa said that the proposals of the Government Medical Officers Association will be handed over to the Minister of Health. We have proposed a separate set of proposals and we have reminded the health minister to uh, upgrade the facilities uh, at least in one teaching hospital in each province to uh, rehabilitate uh, and to provide health care services to uh, those who are rehabilitating and those who are addicted to drugs. Lack of uh, the shortage of drugs within the country, especially within the government sector hospitals is a major issue. Uh, throughout last four or five years during the uh, era of Rajesh Senarata, we have observed many quality failures of drugs. We have suggested the uh, sophisticated WHO standard laboratory uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the testing of the pharmaceutical products and Rajesh Senarata never took this seriously. Therefore, it didn't materialize within the last four, five years. But uh, after we have pointed out this issue last week, Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksha has clearly mentioned that this government is going to implement our proposal, that he has mentioned that the, uh, they will be going to uh, start a quality assurance laboratory soon and therefore we hope that the Prime Minister will fulfil his words and we will as a GMOA fully cooperate with the government to ensure quality drugs to the patients. A special commemorative ceremony was held at the Japanese ambassador's official residence in Colombo to mark the Japanese emperor's birthday. Minister Dr. Bandula Gunawardhana graced the occasion as the chief guest on the invitation of Ambassador of Japan in Sri Lanka, Sugiyama Akira. Karu Jayasurya, Speaker of the Parliament, Ministers, Members of the Parliament, Ambassadors and other distinguished invitees were present on this occasion. State Minister Indika Anuruddha says the opposition blocked the passage of supplementary estimate to vote on account. A range of benefits to be given to the public were averted. The State Minister noted that allocations made by the previous government were used to pay for the purchases made by it and public welfare will be halted due to the negative action of the opposition. The State Minister was speaking at a meeting held at the Agricultural Research Officers in Diulapitiya. And now for news from the sporting arena, this is Sports News. CHNFC over KMR Force in a closely fought out dialogue rugby second round fixture by 26 points to 17 at the race course grounds. CH scored four tries and three conversions and in reply Air Force scored three tries and a conversion. CH took a comfortable 12-5 lead at half time. CH opened their scoring in the 36th minute. On resumption of the second half, CH went into action. Air Force scored their try in the 58th minute and CH followed it up with another try. Meanwhile, another match of the Interclub League Rugby Tournament was held at the Nitavala Stadium in Kandy. Kandy Sports Club beat CRNFC team by a score of 39 to 15 points. <laughs> Venezuela's Yulima Rojas said, With that, we are in ITN News. Take care and have a pleasant day.